Hi there everyone, welcome back to another episode of Nigi Tech. In this video, we will do a very quick review and unboxing of this Core i5-12400F. And I will also let you know why this processor is best for productivity if I have a budget of rupees 50,000 for PC build. So without further ado, let's unbox it. Okay, so here you can see the packaging of this box like this. And the good thing about this processor is that this is not K variant or K version, which means that this will also comes with a fan. And one more thing guys, I would like to tell you, buy this CPU only if you want to go with discrete GPU, because this one is F variant, which means that you will only see your screen if you have got a discrete GPU. So this was one of very important information guys if you would like to go with this one and obviously i will give you compelling reason why should you go with this core i5 12400f in 2024 okay so let me quickly unbox it so here you can see it is very easy peasy i would say so you just simply need to you know open it like this and here in the top i can see this processor which obviously you can see from outside box. And now let me quickly, you know, uh, push it from this side, from side. Then only it will come out. And then here we have got this fan. And I really love this, um, you know, Intel cardboard design for packaging. Since we are not using any plastic here and seems like the cardboard is also very um, minimalistic use of cardboard and then here we can see the whole packaging is very minimal okay so let me quickly throw this and now let's see the fan the intel stock fan which i would say will be good enough in this particular use case scenario um, since this processor will not be overclocked and this is non-graphical variant so this stock fan will work perfectly fine in that scenario. So as you can see here, the processor look like this from the back. Here we can see the badging of Intel and the name of processor. And on this side, we can see this LGA1700 socket. Now let's talk about why we have chosen this two year old CPU instead of current gen. And then answer I would like to give in two different section. The first one is price. So this processor I got only for 8,000 rupees in Flipkart sale. Yes, you heard it right, only for 8,000. And if I compare this processor with current generation equivalent, which will be 14 gen Core i5 14400F, it is more than double the price it is around 19,000 rupees. Then obvious question will come in your mind. Oh, this is two generation old CPU. And then obviously the 14 generation will have, you know, better performance. But the question is how much better actually it is. That we will see now. So let's talk about lithography. This 12 generation processor is Intel 7 based and so the intel 14 generation both processor are based on intel 7 which is you know you can say a gimmick as this is 10 nanometer process but intel call it intel 7 it's okay but the point here is both these processor which is 14 gen and this 12 gen are based on same lithography and lithography really make a difference which means that we will not see a quantum jump in terms of performance. Now let's see and talk about other aspects. For example, base clock or number of cores available. For that, let's jump into our computer screen. And here we go, here we can see we have already opened Intel official website. And if I scroll it down, and here as you can see, as I was mentioning that, both these 12 generation and 14 generation are based on same Intel 7 lithography. And then here on the left, we can see the total number of cores in 12 gen is 6 and in 14 generation is 10, which obviously one can question, oh, then, you know, there are so many number of cores, then this processor will obviously outperform 12 generation, maybe 40 to 50% higher. 
it's not like that guys if you have more number of core means better processor it all depend on the application that we would like to run Obviously, if we have got multi-core processor, it may perform well in server-oriented task. But let's say if we have got higher clock count or higher boost, then it would be good in applications like gaming and productivity apps, for example, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And then here we can see the total number of threads here are 12, and here we have got 16. So these are the efficient cores which do not have multi-threading capability. So these, I would say, are efficiency cores, which will help processor to reduce electricity consumption. Now let's talk about some of main features, which is max turbo frequency. Here we can see the 12th generation can go up to 4.4. However, the newer generation can go up to 4.7. But this is max turbo frequency, guys. Our processor do not always work at maximum frequency. Here we can see the base clock frequency of both processor is same which means that at normal working condition you will virtually see no difference between both. And then here we can see in terms of cache memory we have got only 2 MB of difference. Similarly in case of L2 cache we have got 2 MB of difference. Processor TDP is also same. However, the maximum TDP in case of this 14 generation is high because of, you know, addition of more number of cores. Now, if we go down, we can see in terms of feature, the maximum memory supported by 12 generation is 128 gigabyte, guys, which I would say is more than enough. How many of us generally have this much amount of RAM? Maybe 0.1%. But that is very exceptional case guys. Generally we go with 16 or 32 gigabyte of RAM and if somebody really want higher RAM then they generally go with 64 gigabyte. So the point here is I do not think so that you know having higher amount of memory support will going to make any difference. However the RAM base clock frequency will make and here we go guys here we can see both these processors support similar range of memory. In case of DDR5, this is the base clock. Do not get confused with the RAM frequency guys because you might have seen the RAM with 7000 megahertz of frequency. That particular capability is motherboard dependent. Which means that even though the processor officially says that it support DDR5 up to 48 megahertz, in actual that can go beyond that and it depends on your motherboard. Now, if we see here, the maximum number of memory channel is same, memory bandwidth is same, DMI revision is same, and so the maximum number of DMI lanes, which is 8 each. And if we talk about PCI Express uh, compatibility here, we can see it supports both PCIe version 4 and 5. And which again means that, you know, the maximum number of PCI Express lanes supported are 20. So eventually what I am here saying is you can get the processor which is less than half of the cost and have around 90 to 95% of performance of 14 gen that really make this processor value for money and that's all guys from my side in this video i hope you find this video helpful and informational if you also would like to buy this same processor then i'm gonna put the buying link in the description of this video from there you can buy this and in that way you can also help this channel to grow because in that way we will also earn some revenue without touching the price you pay also do not forget to like and subscribe to this channel to follow more such tutorial and i will catch you soon with one such another video till then you take care and bye bye